Uh, welcome tonight to uh, Denver Dale Radio Society. Absolutely delighted that we've got uh, Ken G4VZV, who is uh, one of our uh, members uh, who offered a few weeks ago, he's probably regretting it now, uh, to give us a talk on his uh, fun he's had operating pedestrian mobile. And uh, I believe as well, Ken, if I can talk you up a little bit, uh, that uh, Practical Wireless are going to be running this as well, aren't they? Uh, very soon as an article in Practical Wireless. So um, I'm going to just make sure. So you need to unmute yourself, Ken. Done that. Okay. So, Ken, I'm going to hand over to you and uh, let you fire away with your presentation. Okay. <clears throat> right. Uh... The presentation is about pedestrian mobile and uh, my activities over the last, uh, well, two or three years doing pedestrian mobile down on the Mediterranean uh, in Spain as Echo Alpha 5 stroke G4VZV. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, and I hope this works straight away, is I'm going to bring up a map so I can show you the area where I go. Let's just see if we get that up. Um, right. If uh, Yeah, we can all see that. That's good. Can you see that? Right. You'll see that what I've brought up here is a street view of where I go uh, with a map just to the left-hand side. If I uh, narrow that down a little bit, you'll see that it's... At Santa Pola, you probably can see that on them. I hope you can see it on there. And Santa Pola is approximately 20 kilometers south of Alicante. You'll also see on there Benidorm, well known, which is another 50 miles further north than where I operate uh, on my pedestrian mobile. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I hope this works now, is to play. Uh, something on YouTube so I'll give you a flavour of what it's all about. Let's see if this comes on. Uh, I, it, well the sun's just come up actually here. The sun has just come up in the last um, about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes and I did hear a Victor Kilo 2 Sierra Oscar Lima calling. I heard him calling and I <coughs> gave him a call and he was beaming long path but he could not hear me he wasn't very strong, only a five and two, five and three. And then all of a sudden when you called me, you sort of took me by surprise. Okay, back to you, Peter. VK2, Charlie Romeo. Uh, this is Echo Alpha 5, stroke G4, Victor, Zulu, Victor, pedestrian, mobile, over. Yeah, Echo America 5, stroke Germany 4, Victor, Zulu, Victor. I'm just switching to another one. I'm still videoing it. I've got a minute on the video now. 
and uh, just to show uh, on the power, my power, which is 100 watts, um, and you should see that on the uh, meter, and the <coughs> 857, the trolley and everything. Thanks very, very much for the report, uh, and it's a pleasure to talk to you again, Jim. You're coming through, absolutely romping through 5.9+. plus. Uh, I'll try and get this video back to you, and uh, look out for it on an email. Cheers, Jim. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. This is Echo Alpha 5 Stroke Golf 4 Victor Zulu Victor Pedestrian Mobile. Over. Okay. He went over S9 that time. As the sun is coming up, it's not uh, looking across the valley. I can see the, uh, the transition from uh, light to dark. So we're just now moving. Right. Uh, can you all see the, uh, the slideshow now? Yeah, we can, Ken. No problem. Far away. Okay, right. <clears throat> right, so what I've done there is I've given you a flavour of what uh, pedestrian mobile's like, and particularly this, the, the signals that you can hear. And I don't know if you, probably, you noticed how little noise level there was, uh, and the signal-to-noise ratio is fantastic. But more about that later. Let me just describe firstly uh, who I am. I'm G4VZV. For those that don't know me from the Denby Dale Club, uh, I've been licensed since the late 70s. My first call, some call sign was G6 Echo Alpha Golf. I'm uh, a member of the RSGB. I've been vice chairman of the Maltby Radio Club. I'm also a member of Ham Radio Today, the UK computer group. I'm now a member, obviously, of the Denby Dale uh, Radio Club as well. And as Nick pointed out, um, I'm also now quite uh, heavily involved with Practical Wireless. I've got an article coming in the Practical Wireless, and I'm also giving regular band updates and reports, both on HF and on VHF. With regards to the uh, pedestrian mobile, one thing that is very noticeable is that you become quite well known. And stations like, uh, well known DX stations like VK2CR, Delta Foxtrot 2 Blue Ocean, ZS1OPB, uh, Don G3XTT from PW, um, G3SED, Mike Devereaux from Nevada Communications. Uh, these are all big DXs and they all do know me by first name and that's come through uh, mainly through the pedestrian mobile working. My interests have, have primarily been on HF uh, for best part of 45 to 50 years. I'm very enthusiastic. I, I, I don't know if this is the right word to describe me but I specialise in building antennas but not only building them understanding how they work and this has come to fruition on the uh, pedestrian mobile trolleys that I've uh, been building. For over 25 years I've been experimenting with antennas which started off with me building uh, wide spaced Yagi antennas and also building a two element and then a three element cubicle quad for HF. Uh, and most recently, and I think most of you know this, I've built a six element delta loop for two meters and now I've uh, made that into a 10 element delta loop. And I've experimented as recent as this last week and I've wide spaced it now. So uh, that enthusiasm sort of spurred me on a little bit towards doing other things. Right, um, by the end of the slides, I hope that you'll have got uh, sort of the basics of what pedestrian mobile is all about. Um, and having heard some of it, maybe, maybe someone on the club or maybe someone listening who's not a member of the club may go on to look at building um, a trolley or some sort of frame that they can mount their equipment on. So let me first start by saying um, on slide two here we'll see um, uh, what is pedestrian mobile and how did I start up. 
Uh, well, firstly, let me say it's a little bit of a specialised type of amateur radio operating. It's not an expensive thing to do. Uh, you've got to be accurate. You've got to be precise with how you are um, mounting the equipment on the trolley, which is quite important. The type of antenna and where you go with the uh, pedestrian mobile trolley. I'll come to that a little bit later. You'll see why, probably when we get to slide that six or seven. Um, there's no fancy five, six, seven thousand pound transceivers. There's no towers. There's no large beam arrays involved. It's simple wire antenna mounted with three or four other things on the trolley. And it's simple. It is easy. It's challenging. Uh, and the challenge is to get it to work because uh, my first attempt was successful. My second attempt on a second trolley wasn't as good. So I reverted back to a third, to the third trolley, which is actually a copy of the first one. Um, and, and since I've been out with that, it's just been uh, fantastic. How did all this start? Well, um, firstly, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a retired chap. I retired, uh, uh, from the local constabulary about 13 or 14 years ago <clears throat> and when I, uh, when I uh, packed up, uh, although I did get another job, I also decided to buy a property down in Spain. So I've got a small, well what I class as a bolt hole down in Spain. Um, and when I moved down there I set up a little station in the house uh, however, the Spanish have tightened up on the regulations and even more so now that Brexit is coming, uh, <clears throat> where you either are going to be a Spanish resident or you're a non-resident. Now, I don't want to commit myself to being a Spanish resident because my main house is here, my main home is here. And although I spent many months there, I've decided that uh, rather than go out there and buy a massive four bedroom villa and pool or and that sort of thing, I'd stick to a small bolt old and this is where I live. I've got many commitments back home with grandchildren and what have you. So I decided uh, that reason together with the fact that Brexit's coming in and I wanted to see how it all works out first that I'll stay as a non-resident. However, that in itself has created a problem because being a non-resident you cannot put up antennas on the house or on your villa or whatever else you've got. The uh, regulations are very tight in Spain. You can only do that if you've got residency and then you've got to pay uh, quite a large amount of money. I'm talking like two or three hundred euros just to get your permission to put an antenna on top of the house. So I thought, how can I, now I'm in Spain, how can I um, get a fantastic signal out, surely? And I'd read up about the operating near the sea. And I knew that the sea had a big influence on your signal. So I thought, surely I can do something that's portable. I use the word portable because at that time I thought, should I put something in the car and operate in a car close to the sea? And then I decided, no, let's go the full hog. So what I decided to do initially was go portable on the beach. And I used a loop, a loop of wire with a tuning unit below it. And that is the picture that was on the, the front cover of the May practical wireless. Uh, and that shows me in my early days experimenting with a vertically polarized loop on the beach, thinking that I'd get a uh, low angle because I'm close to the sea. And yes, I did. I worked into VK with that piece of wire, which was no more than um, round about 16 foot, uh, which was in a square loop. Uh, so I thought, mm, but the signal reports I was getting were still not very good, but, you know, five and two, five and three, five and four. So back to the drawing board. And um, what I decided to do then was um, try 
to make something that I can get within a meter or two of the of the sea and that I can walk with it on wheels uh, and could I do what a lot of uh, VK stations do and an, also another there's another guy up in the uh, in the UK, uh, a guy called Dave, G4AKC, who is also a, a member of our group of pedestrian mobile users. So I decided to build a trolley. So that's how I started it up. On the next slide, um, I, a little bit of this has been covered in the, in the first slide, uh, and I'll come on to the trolley in a second, but uh, if you go, why do I do it? Because you want to go out there and be a big signal. And that is exactly what I wanted to do. And be a big signal is exactly what, what I am. When I'm out there, I use the sea or the salt lagoons. I sometimes go within only a meter of the sea. I'm on wet sand or I'm right at the side of the road with, with the salt lagoons. <clears throat> And uh, with a vertical antenna, which is specifically a quarter wave vertical antenna, I, um, I operate from a, a metal trolley, which is in effect a bit like a shopping trolley. It's, it's, it's actually a sack trolley. I mentioned that it's low cost. <clears throat> if you do want to be noticed, and you want to be noticed on the HF bands, that is definitely the way to go. The alternative is you buy a big linear, put out uh, in excess of what you should be doing, which is more than the 400 watts in the UK. You put up the biggest beam you can at 100 foot high, and then you might be a, a, an absolute uh, uh, powerful station in Europe. What I can tell you is that when you work pedestrian mobile, the likes of Delta Foxtrot 2 Blue Ocean on 40 meters actually comes onto the frequency where I am and we talk together on there and we work stations together over in the Pacific, uh, VK, ZLs, and uh, sometimes over towards California. Um, that's the achievement and the results that you'll get. I've mentioned the fact that you get very low noise because you're away from buildings. Generally, you are, if you buy the salt lakes, there's nothing around you for a few miles. And if you buy the sea, well, I don't know many people that live by the sea, literally, but when I'm at the side of the, the water's edge, there's nothing around me for probably several hundred yards, some derelict buildings maybe. You don't have any restrictions. What I mean by that is there's no planning permission required. Uh, there's no EMC problems. Uh, it's fun and it's very rewarding when you can achieve the results like you heard a few minutes ago. Um, you're, on, you're in the outside, you're in the fresh air, you've got the sunlight, you're exercising. What more could you really want than playing radio outside? Signal to noise ratio, fantastic, um, and great signals. So these are the uh, benefits for it. Right, you also will create pileups and, and if I can I will show you a video later right at the end where uh, I'm operating calling CQ and there are that many stations calling me I can't even work out any call signs um, it's so difficult I had to start going by numbers and that's me on a trolley you do meet other radio hams uh, for example I've been visited whilst I've been there by EA5ISZ, who is well known, a guy called Trevor down in uh, Alicante area. Uh, LA2PC, a guy called Ola, who runs a big station and up to two kilowatts from uh, the Alicante area. Uh, another guy, a Dutch guy, uh, Echo Alpha 5, India Tango Golf. 
these are people that are walking by or, or have heard me on the radio and when I give my location they come out to where I am and come and have a look at what I'm doing and probably the reason for that is because they can hear me working stations that they cannot hear never mind work um, you also get one or two people quite inquisitive that come up to you and ask you uh, what are you doing uh, well obviously I know what I'm doing but they don't they and, and some of these people are not English some of them are Spanish German Dutch French and they speak in the broken English what I, 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 the, the funniest of all the funniest question I've ever been asked is are you listening to the fish because I thought am I listening to the fish and obviously I'm thinking they they're not sure I've got headphones on because obviously I want to keep the noise level pretty close to what to me not, not to other people who are walking along the beach and they think they think I'm actually listening to fish or something so you get some real strange types of questions you also get people wanting to take your picture as well um, or to stand by the trolley and have their picture taken um, I've mentioned uh, um, the noise level and I've mentioned that you are a big station you're not just a big gun as a lot of people uh, give that name to the big HF operators but I believe you're not a big gun in fact you're a you're a cannon and that's exactly you know people may smile at this but um, you are a formidable signal and you've got the likes of um, you've got the likes of uh, Callum who, uh, who you know from DX commander calling me whilst I'm pedestrian mobile you've also got the big guns that want to work here because to them they think we want to get in there first and work this pedestrian mobile station so it creates massive pileups you can drop your power really low and I mean when I say low you can go to 500 milliwatts half a watt generally I stick to two or three watts and I do that on the FT857 and drop the voltage slightly and you can go down to I've been down to one and two watts working into South Africa with five and nine being near the sea or being near the salt lagoons is very healthy for you as well uh, and and, uh, and of course in my situation I'm also getting a tan while I'm uh, doing what I'm doing because I usually go with uh, either just a very flimsy vest, or vest and shorts or sometimes I just don't wear anything other than the shorts uh, I've even just had flip-flops and shorts on um, I've put on the slide D expeditions uh, and I mentioned that because I'm looking at going out certainly I was going to do it at the end of last year and then I was going to do it again in uh, the beginning of this year but the Covid virus uh, put a stop to that and I want to go to Tabarka Island which is just off the coast of Alicante it's round about five or six mile into the Mediterranean but it's sufficiently far into the sea to be given its iota number 093 so uh, I can take the trolley in the car uh, to the docks that area and, and, uh, and uh, get onto a boat and the boat will take me and the trolley out to Tabarka Island which is about half an hour and I can set up and operate with the two batteries and the trolley I'll probably get about about five hours radio use uh, or maybe even six if I drop the power a bit and then that will be uh, well I, I don't know what to say because I can imagine the massive pile up that I will have almost continually and I'll probably need to have someone with me to do the logging so uh, I'll move on to the next slide uh, just bear with me a second while I move on to uh, the next slide down the list right pedestrian mobile explanation of how it works uh, right right firstly 
You can do pedestrian mobile in the countryside, but it will not work. You need to get the fantastic results. You need to be near the sea. The nearest coast to us here in this part of Yorkshire, I would imagine is Cleethorpes, maybe Bridlington or Filey or somewhere like that. Now, that would be a good idea to go there and take a trolley in the car, walk to somewhere close to the sea, but you need to be in what's called the Fresnel Zone. For anyone that doesn't know about the Fresnel Zone, it's the area that's around about one to two, possibly two and a bit wavelengths away from the sea edge. One wavelength is 20 meters on 20 meter band. So once you go more than about 40 meters away from the sea edge, you're at the end of the Fresnel zone. And I've actually tried this and experimented. I've had the trolley at the side of the sea, literally where my feet are almost wet. Within a, a meter, I'm having to be careful that the sea is coming up to the wheels and up to the trolley. But then I've actually walked with the trolley with the 16 foot wire, vertical wire on the trolley, walk carefully away to about 80, round about uh, 80 feet away from the water's edge. And the signal, the, the station I'm working, the signal goes down from five, nine plus down to sometimes not even readable. So it's very important that you get close to the salt water. The Fresnel zone effect, what it does in effect, it, um, it enhances, it enhances the low angle of radiation from your antenna. And that's why when you're down by the sea, always use vertical antennas. Uh, it doesn't have the same effect with an horizontal antenna. Uh, in effect, what you're doing is you're using the C, you're using God's amplifier really, because that's what it is, is giving you a free amplifier as God here. You're using the C like a, like a sheet of copper. The C, like a sheet of copper, has very little resistance. So your signal will tend to uh, fire in a directionally from where you stood towards the sea. So with me, because I'm near Alicante, which is on the Costa Blanca, southeast coast of Spain, if I walk to the beach, then the Mediterranean is to, me, to my east. So from there, I work stations in the Middle East, which are absolutely 5, 9 plus 40 dB, over into the Far East, South Africa, because I've got the sea all around me. Well, I say all around, I've got it from the north, but it's angled all the way around eastwards towards the south direction. Um, the, there's a, a, because I, because I use the salt lagoons and others, other pedestrian mobile users can't use salt lagoons because I don't know of any in the UK. Uh, firstly, I'm the only guy down in the Mediterranean that does this. And secondly, I can use the salt lagoons and use it like a beam. And you're going to probably say to me, how or why and how do you do that? Well, what I do is I position myself around the salt lagoon and then the signal bounces off the salt water in the lagoon. The density of the salt is so high that if you put your hand in and just lick your finger, it's incredibly salty, more salty than the sea. And it's only two foot deep. Uh, basically the salt flats, it's where they drag all the salt off. Uh, and they use it for rock salt, believe it or not, and salt that goes, well, basically for the roads, not for salt that goes on your dinner. So um, I use, um, depending on the time of day, depending on the time of year uh, and what band conditions are like, determines whether I go by the sea or by the salt lagoons and position myself for maximum signal in a particular direction. Um, so that's what I do. 
Uh, let me go on to uh, the next uh, slide. Right, just before I explain about the equipment and then bring up some more pictures, I just want to mention a well-known guy who you can see on YouTube. His call sign is Victor Kilo 3, Yankee Echo, VK3YE. Peter Parker is his name. Uh, he's well known as a DXer, but he's also and more so well known as an experimenter. He has done lots of tests where he's gone in the sea with his feet and actually stood in the, in the sea, even trailing a wire into the sea to see if it enhances his signal. And he has done lots of experimenting and you'll see uh, and watch the videos on YouTube where you can see the noise level and how it affects how you go into the sea and the noise level goes down rapidly down to virtually nothing and how it enhances his signal. Um, right, uh, let me see if I can go back to pictures. Uh, well, let me see if I can get it with this one. Right, we've got YouTube on there. Um, <clears throat> Here we go. Right, some pictures. Uh, right, I'm going up to the top. That's a picture of me in my early days, about 25 years ago on the left hand side in the yellow shirt. Uh, there is the picture. I'm putting the cursor over the picture on the beach, on the, the one on the right, where you see the 16 foot of wire. That was my first experiment. Here's a picture of me on the, uh, on the left here with the white shorts. That's later in the evening. You can see the bar lit up in the distance and that's me on the radio. Uh, and um, I'm looking out to the sea, which is in an easterly direction. Uh, there's a, another picture of me with the shorts on here where I'm on the headland and I'm very close to the sea, that's just uh, on the entrance into the uh, harbour at Guadamar. The picture here on the right hand side is a picture of my, well firstly that's the picture of the number one trolley where, the, where I put the cursor, um, the third one on the right, and then this picture on the far right is the picture of the trolley number two, which is a, a, a battery operated golf uh, trolley. And you can see I've mounted the equipment on there. There's the handle and the wheels. I put a wooden base on, which you can just see under there. And um, I use that as trolley number two. And that's, that's where I've taken a picture of the of me, well, I'm walking to the beach through the pine uh, trees, which is about 300 yards away. I mentioned that you meet people. Here is an Echo Alpha 5 station. Uh, the the, the, both of these guys here are Echo Alpha 5s. Uh, this guy here uh, is uh, a guy called Joachim, who's uh, an Echo Bravo 5 station who came out to visit me and uh, wanted his picture taking with me. This guy here, uh, here on my trolley, is an Echo Alpha 5. He's from Torrevieja, stood in directly behind my trolley. This is, a, this is Lima Alpha 2 Papa Charlie, the big DXer, uh, who's from Norway, but now lives down in Alicante, and he came to visit me. Uh, and a few pictures here of me, one by the sea. Now this is by the Salt Lakes, uh, the picture next to um, Ola, LA2PC, is uh, with the trolley uh, at the side of the Salt Lakes looking north, and that's looking north towards Santa Pola town. Uh, and I'm, I'm sort of positioning myself, uh, looking north, using the Salt Lake to get the maximum signal up towards the north. Uh, I mentioned salt lagoons. There's the salt. You can see that's not a mound of snow. It's salt. It's about uh, 200 yards away, maybe. 
and you can see little bits of salt here on the edge of this salt lake. Um, this picture here, I don't know, I hope you can see this picture, uh, where the bench is. Uh, that picture just there is um, of my trolley on the headland. Now, that has got the benefit of the sea to the right, the sea to the left, and the sea in the distance. So what I'm doing there is I'm getting maximum signal to the left, which is north, maximum signal to the right, which is south, and then directly out to the east. Now, out of all the locations that I go to, uh, this is probably the best where I'm located on this picture here, uh, which is me stood right at the side of what looks like a, a crash barrier. It isn't, it's a metal barrier. Um, <clears throat> I'm on the edge of a road, but it's a, it's a lay-by actually. And this water here is a salt lagoon. The sea is the other side to the right. So I'm looking now to the west. And this is where I get my long path uh, signals radiating from that antenna, which is a quarter wave. I believe that's on 40 meters actually. It's very high that one. And um, I say that because I'm dressed, quite well dressed there. And I, and I think that's in the morning, uh, just as the sun is coming up. So I'm working long path over to VK and ZL. Um, so uh, I'll play you, uh, I'll play you another um, video. So at least you get the flavor of what it's about again. Let's see. If we get this coming through. Three Papa X-ray Tango, EA5 stroke G4 VZV pedestrian on 25 watts. Uh, <laughs> okay then Gordon. Gordon, I'm going to video this a little bit for you and if I can I will send it to you on the video just showing the location here and you'll also be able to see uh, and listen to the video. I've got the phone in one hand, the microphone in the other hand. So back to you, and uh, you'll hopefully I'll be able to copy the next transmission. You, you are coming through five and nine, no problem, Gordon, over. Yeah, well, I've got it on the video, a minute and a half, and uh, that. So, right, uh, back to the slides. That was a QSO with uh, uh, a guy in the UK, as you heard, and again, five and nine, very little noise level. Right, pedestrian, mobile, and the equipment. Firstly, you need a trolley. It needs to be a metal trolley, and the reason is, you use a quarter wave vertical fastened but insulated from the trolley. The trolley becomes the earth bus. What happens is you can either walk that trolley to the beach, take it in the car or walk with it when you get to the beach. The crucial bits to this trolley are firstly the antenna and it needs really to be a quarter wave. You can use a half wave, but you try and use a half wave on, well, a half wave on a uh, 20 meter band is, is uh, quite high. You can't possibly put a half wave up on 40 meters. Uh, you just cannot do it. It's, it's far too high. You're looking at 66 foot. So 
you can get away with uh, a quarter wave on 20, also 17, 15, 12 and 10. Uh, there are no earth radials involved in this. There are no counterpoise wires. Uh, and like I've said, you're gonna use the sea or the salt areas to your advantage to get low angle radiation. I have tried as a standby aerial a nine to one on on with a 23 foot vertical wire running up a pole. And it worked, but it was a couple of S points down on a quarter wave vertical. And then I'm gonna to come to why in a second. Batteries, well, um, I use, uh, well, I use car batteries, but there are other types of batteries that you can use to power the equipment. Bearing in mind you need to power the transceiver, you need to power an amplifier if you've got one on the trolley. I do have one actually, although for the first 12 months I didn't. I just used 100 watts. And, um, and anything else that you may need to draw uh, 12 volts from the batteries. Uh, I use two of them, which total around about 130 or 140 amp hour. You also need an ATU. And what I've done is I've got a combined ATU with a GTU uh, and a GTU I'll come to in a moment. I've put plastic sheet on there with question marks because when I'm using my trolley, which is made of metal, although it's got plastic wheels, it's got a base plate on it because it's a sack trolley. And the, sack, uh, the, the base of the sack trolley is touching ground and I've created a capacitance to ground by putting a plastic sheet underneath the base plate. So the trolley is totally insulated from ground. Now we come on to the critical bit about it before we go on to some questions. And that's the GTU, ground tuning unit. Um, I did mention a guy earlier, v, uh, G4AKC, he's part of our group and he actually uh, is the guy that initially designed a, a, the GTU along with the uh, uh, a VK2 station and uh, his call sign is VK2 Papa Romeo Charlie. Right, the ground tuning unit consists of a variable capacitor, a trapped coil, uh, a meter, a couple of uh, uh, SO239s. Right, what you're doing with this ground tuning unit, and mine is part of the ATU, it's called the MFJ934. It works a little bit like an artificial earth. What you're doing is you're pushing and forcing the current, the RF current to ground. Um, you've got to remember if you use a quarter wave vertical, a quarter wave vertical is part of a half wave dipole. So you imagine you've got your quarter wave vertical above the trolley and you've got a quarter wave of it below the trolley. You can't see it. It would normally be a ground plane. It would be a radials. It would be a counterpoise. But you're not using radials. You're not using the counterpoise. What you're doing is using a clever little box where you are uh, tuning, uh, tuning the capacitance control, the variable capacitor, uh, and a little coil inside. And what you're doing is you're forcing the, the RF current to ground, thus creating the other half or a reflection of the other half of your quarter wave vertical above the trolley. By doing that, what you're doing in effect is you're trying to get maximum efficiency from your quarter wave above the trolley. In other words, you're getting absolute maximum efficiency from your quarter wave on the trolley, which in my case is in a plastic sleeve on the side of the trolley. 
once you've got that you what you do is as you tune the controls on the gtu you start to see on the meter the rf current going up and it just goes up like an s meter and in effect you max you're wanting maximum earth current and when you get to that point you'll even hear the signals being enhanced from probably an s2 or an s3 up to an s9 plus so that the device that you're using is getting maximum current to ground you'll it's in effect creating a ground plane and what you're doing is you've got your perfect ground plane it's not a sheet of copper below your trolley it's the sea and it's the salt um, and it's very important because when I said to you very early on my presentation that it's easy to do but you've got to be accurate and get it right that's the bit you've got to get right and that's why you get a, a very low signal to noise ratio a very high signal to noise ratio but you um, get a very strong s meter reading so what you're doing is you're capacitively coupling your, your trolley your earth bus and you're forcing through that trolley any rf current I, I can see well i can't see your faces but i can imagine what's going through your head Oof! i bet he's getting a bit of a belt off his off his trolley because you've got rf in the trolley you've got current traveling through the trolley once you've tuned it very quickly sometimes I'll, I, I have to say on odd occasions I've got a slight tingling off the trolley but only slight because as you as the earth uh, as the current meter goes up any anything in the trolley has already gone into the earth and um, you, all I can say to you is that you're going to get uh, low resistance you're also going to get any stray RF current off the trolley. Uh, you'll get 99 or 100% efficiency or as near of two as you can from your quarter wave above your trolley. You've in effect got a mirror image of your quarter wave below your trolley that you can't see. It's actually in the sand or in the edge of the sea. Uh, and you're replicating the top half of your antenna so that gives you the tremendous signal um, right uh, I'll come on to some more pictures and, and, and another video I've got uh, I've left that blank uh, number eight because I was going to ask uh, if there are any questions um, I'm, I'm not sure I probably will leave that till the end so if, if you can just bear with me I'm going to go on to now uh, slide number nine pedestrian mobile equipment is there anything else you need well obviously you need you need a pen and you need something to write as a little book for your logs your, your log book I carry a phone with me to take pictures to take videos if you're going out later in the evening you need a torch a pair of headphones and they are basically all you need you don't need anything else you walk with your equipment you've got your batteries on your base plate and if you're going in a car you'll transport them in the car and when you get the trolley out of the car you'll put your batteries on the base plate and walk to the edge of the sea so with that um, I'm going to see if I can go back now to uh, any more uh, pictures or any more videos uh, and then uh, see what we've got on here. Uh, here's a, I think I'll see if I can get another one on. I think we've just done that one. All right. Here's another one. Let's see if I can get this one on. So that's, uh, that's uh, W3FOX, there's another one. Any critical comment tonight, as long as I can understand you. So it's, uh, if I 
Picture there is another picture of where I go. Echo Alpha 5 stroke Golf 4 Victor Zulu Victor pedestrian mobile near Alicante over. Roger, Roger, the name is Ken, Kilowatt Echo November. You are a uh, real 59 plus plus. Go ahead. What's the name and location? Go ahead. Okay, my name is Mel. I spell it for you, Marquette. It's M Mexico, Indiana, London. M E L Mel. My location, uh, 100 kilometers north west of Los Angeles. 100 k northwest of Los Angeles. It's the midway between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. In a short distance. Roger, Roger, okay. Right, let me come back now to, uh, I want to get back to the, to the video. Um, back to uh, a normal camera. 
Right, I've come back to the camera. I, 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 is, can anybody acknowledge me that they can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine, Ken. I'm just going to shut down the screen share and uh, chuck it open. I think it was a very, very uh, interesting uh, uh, presentation there, Ken. I think we all enjoyed it and uh, having fantastic results with very, very simple equipment. So let's, uh, let's open it up then to... Uh, any questions from uh, anyone on here tonight? Who wants to go first? Yeah, go on, Tristan. Yeah, just a quick uh, uh, question, Ken. Um, I, while you were talking, I, I, you were telling, uh, speaking about uh, your friend David, who was pedestrian mobile. Um, I happen to know David very well. I've spoken to him on very occasions and watched a few YouTube uh, videos of his. So. Um, it's very much appreciated that you could go out pedestrian mobile with your little cart and uh, in David's case his little trailer HI um, and um, I, I thank you for, for your um, valued uh, presentation and don't worry about the, um, uh, the PowerPoint, you did an excellent job. Thanks Ken. Thanks very much for that uh, there Tristan that's great uh, I don't do you know the Welsh station that uh, was on the last video the two whiskey zero Lima yeah, victory yes he's a, he's in a place I think he's in a, if I'm he's down in a place called Narbeth N-A-R-B-E-T-H and that's near, not far from me down the coast in the Pembrokeshire coast right okay yeah and I think his his name is John Free, uh, it's F R E double F R, yeah, sorry, F R double E L O V E, free love. That's how yeah. you pronounce it. Okay, yeah. okay, thank then. you, thank you, thank thanks, you. Nick. Hey, no problem, Tristan. Uh, yes, go on, John G H J M B. You need to unmute, you need to unmute, John. Done it, there you go, I've done it. Yeah, okay, first of all, thank you very much for a very interesting tour. One simple question. You're operating at the edge of the water and you quote directivity. Is this the directivity is in the direction straight out to sea, as it were? Depends where you go because um, I think Tristan just mentioned about he knows G4 AKC who works from Blackpool. He's the guy in the UK who does this. Uh, there's another guy called M0, uh, his call sign's M0 Delta Alpha Delta up in the north east of the UK. So basically, we are the three that are heavily involved in this. It's just that I do it down on, in the Mediterranean. Uh, unlike G4AKC, he can only go on the west coast because he's up in Blackpool area. Whereas what I do, is that I, I don't cheat, I actually use my location to my ability, to my best ability to get the best signal. And what I do is, I, the, the area is scattered with salt lakes, and what I do is I either go to the sea, and like I said, if I go out in the middle of the morning, uh, mainly like winter time, I don't go out in the middle of summer when people are sunbathing on the beach, uh, or if I do, I go to a, a spot where it's, where there's no one, you know, a bit like out of the way. And what I know is that when I'm beaming, uh, when I'm at the side of the sea and the sea is to the right of me, or I'm looking out to the sea, I'm going, that sea is eastwards, it's the Mediterranean. And that's why I'm picking up, I don't know if you heard on one of those, one of those was Hotel Zulu One Tango Tango, and he was five nine plus 30. Uh, there was the five Bravo 60, he was five and nine. So my signal is going out predominantly the easiest path of, the path of least resistance. And it will always go out the way of the sea or a sheet of copper. If you had a, a, a massive sheet of copper under the, on, under the, um, under the trolley uh, and insulated from the trolley, then your signal would go out in the easy, the path of least resistance. And that's why they say, if you are running, if you've got a, even at your home address, if you've got a quarter wave vertical and you put radials only in one direction, 
and, and like you've got your quarter wave in the corner of your garden that you fan the radials out, that you, your signal will be slightly directional in the direction of the radials. But what I do is I use the sea or I use the salt lagoons. Okay, thank you very much. That's uh, clarified that for me. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you, John. Yeah, oh, anyone else ask, got a question? Yes, who's can that, I ask Joe? A question? Yeah, go on, far away, yeah. Joe. Was that me? Right, good. Uh, I, hello there, Ken, thank you. That was brilliant. Took me mind back. First time I did any operating like that, I had a, a baby buggy which finished up with only two wheels left on it, uh, cutting it down a cliff face uh, yeah. in, in Dorset somewhere and um, with a car battery and an FT7, if you remember those. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, that's right, yeah. 10 watt radio. But I just wanted to wonder if you tried tilting the air at about 60 degrees in the direction you wanted to operate it in, if it enhanced it at all. Um, right. This is a guy let, with a shopping. Let me say, I've not tried it other than you know, sometimes when I'm by the sea, mm. I use a DX Commander fiberglass pole, which goes in a sleeve on the side of the trolley. Mm. Um, and, and, and I can show you those, I can show you any of these pictures anytime. I'll probably put another one back up for you, a close up of the trolley. And um, I run a wire up and clip it to the top of the DX Commander, and, it, and, in, and the DX Commander goes up to 10 meters. I only want half of that, five meters for 20 meters. So I only push the DX Commander up five meters halfway. But sometimes when it's windy, you tend to get, instead of getting the aerial vertical, it tends to do that. Mm. Yeah. You asked, me, you asked me a question, would it enhance the signal? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because you're creating a very low angle, probably even too low, by angling it towards the sea. I mean, they always say for good DX contacts, you need to be around about anywhere between 17 and 22 degrees from the vertical, you know, from the, uh, from the ground plane. And... Um, if you start bending the aerial, so if you're bending it like this and the sea is here, then you've, you've narrowed your angle down. Yeah. Uh, and I would tend to think, what would happen? I've never done it, but what would happen is it probably would cause the signal to fade with QSB. That's uh, well, my thought. Yeah, we'll have to try it anyway, Ken. Well, yeah. I've, I've not tried it, but it was an idea that I had a while since. Uh, can I put it back to Nick now for see if there's anybody yeah. else? Okay, thank, thank you, Gerald. Right, anyone else? Yeah, Tom, ZS1 AFS. Right, that's better. My name is, uh, good evening, uh, Nick. Thanks very much uh, for letting me in here. I just wanted to say that I've worked uh, the shopping trolley mobile station in Blackpool several times, right almost from the tip of Africa. So uh, obviously Blackpool's changed geographical position. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I've got to say... Um, Firstly, I can work a lot easier than, than uh, the guy up in Blackpool, David. David is predominantly, uh, can predominantly work over to the west and southwest. But bearing in mind, signals do curve a little bit. They curve, uh, it's a natural phenomenon. And he can work into ZD7, Victor Papa 8, down into... Uh, the Falkland Islands, and he can work down into Zulu Sierra, usually, usually without too much problem. But I, uh, when I'm where I am, I've got the, the, the sea, I'm slightly nearer to Zulu Sierra land than he is, but I've got a clearer path. There's no bend in the signal. It's straight out from, from either the headland or from the edge of the sea, with all the sea to the well, it's, it curves round me from north out to the east and then to the south. So I'm getting my signal going out in the opposite direction to David. But I do understand what you're saying. Uh, and David has got a formidable signal. There's no doubt about that. Um, I know, uh, I mean, I, I, I gave you the call sign of one, ZS1OPB. ZS, uh, 
I work lots of um, stations down in uh, South Africa uh, when I'm on the pedestrian mobile. In fact, it's probably one of my favourite areas for working. Um, I work the Echo, Echo Lima station, the Echo Lima de-expedition. I worked a de-expedition down in uh, West Africa. So, uh, and um, Victor Papa 8 as well. So, yeah, um, it depends which way you want, to, which way we, where I want to stand and what time of the day it is and where propagation is best. Okay, thank you, Tom, and thank you, Ken, for that answer. Uh, right, anyone else got a question to uh, to Ken? I've yeah, Ralph. Question. Ralph, yeah, far away. Righty ho. Uh, evening there, Ken. G0UWB here. I wonder if you know a friend of mine, by any chance, Keith, G3TTC. He spends a lot of time going around Europe on beaches and harbours, um, portable with a trolley. No, I don't know him. I don't know him. Oh, fair enough. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't care. What I will say about it, and, and I haven't mentioned this, um, and I've kept this right till the end, we do have a WhatsApp group, um, which is called the Real HF group, uh, Real HF radio group. Um, I think when that was set up, it, it was set up because... Uh, it was a formidable group of guys. There's about, I think there's round about 500 members of this group and we're all on the phone on a WhatsApp group and we can all send messages to each other. And um, when we're out sometimes, I will message uh, someone on the group uh, and, and one of those stations that picks up is sometimes down in VK and ZL, and they know where we are. We're on. They, I'll put a call out just saying, "I'm going on air on 20 meters on 14195," um, and maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, I'm called by somebody on the WhatsApp group. Um, it's not cheating. It's just telling everyone that we're on air, uh, and uh, we we come on on the group that way. Um, yeah, my next visit, by the way, is going to be next week and I'm going back down there and I hope, bearing in mind the restrictions with COVID uh, virus, uh, I am told that I will be able to go with the trolley close to the beach and the salt lagoons, but I'm going to go to the police station first just to make sure because I don't want to be pulled up because there are... Oh, they're actually, um, if you're not wearing a mask in shops and places like that, or you're within 1.5 meters of someone, you're not wearing a mask. They're quite, they're, they're, they're easy to fine you and they're fining people a thousand euros at a time. And I don't want to get fined just for playing radio. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Sounds sensible, Ken. Right, yeah, uh, David. Um, Ken, thanks very much. Very interesting. I hadn't realised that pedestrian mobile actually meant so much. Um, you mentioned a moment ago police. Have the police showed any interest in, in what you're doing while you've been operating? Right. Well, uh, yes. Uh, I would say probably half a dozen times and I've been out many, I would say I've been out several hundred times in the last two years. Half a dozen times the police come up to me. Uh, I can speak a little bit of Spanish as well. I can get through. Uh, the fact that uh, I'm an ex-policeman do, go down, goes down well with them, actually, because I start talking about that. But um, they show interest. They sort of look at what I'm doing. They get out of the car. They have a look. Some of them don't get out of the car, but most of them have. But what I do carry is my is my amateur radio license with me in my pocket, and obviously it explains because it shows the reciprocal element of the license, which is in several languages. But bearing in mind, lots of these policemen can speak English as well, mm -hmm. um, and 
they've never basically they just look at me they talk to me for five minutes and then they drive off right i've never actually been pulled up and told to put the equipment pack it together and go home right and, and from the general public are they taking an interest as well the general public you'll be surprised every time i go out every time someone comes up to me uh, i would say the maximum number of people that I've had stood close to me, probably six, seven, eight people in one go. Mainly they're Spanish, uh, odd English person, but not many. They're either Spanish, German, French or Dutch. The Dutch take a lot of interest and you'll be surprised how many Dutch amateurs are down on the Costa Blanca, usually in motorhomes and uh, parked up further up the road, walking along the beach, and that's when they come over to me. Right, thanks for that. Very good. Any okay, more questions? thank you. Yeah, yep, I've okay, got one. Okay. Shall I go? Yeah, go. Yeah, go. <clears throat> Sorry, hey, uh, Ken, thanks for the talk. Um, your trolley, I notice you've got something down towards the bottom of it that's got a, a, a big heat sink on. Is that uh, some kind of linear, or, or, yeah, or yes. what is that? Yes, it is. Um, one or two of you are going to sort of laugh at this, I think. I've got what's called an RM, you all, maybe some of you do know them, RM Italian amplifier. An RM405V is the model number. It'll put out, they say, 400 watts <laughs> SSB. You know and I know it doesn't. It, they don't. They, they don't put that much out. They'll probably put half of that power out if you're lucky. The maximum power I've got out from my RM amplifier is 180 watts. Um, and uh, it has a fan on the top. It does give me a little edge. I don't put it on unless I really need to. And the reason why I don't is because I'm carrying two batteries with me. One powers the radio, one powers the linear. And if I start hammering the linear, then I I'll obviously dr the drive power to the linear is five watts. So the, the battery powering the radio can go on for hours, but the battery powering the linear hasn't got much, uh, hasn't got many hours in it when you start hammering it at 180 watts. Mm. So it's there as a standby if I need it, but don't really need it very often. I wonder why you use that rather than the power output of the, the radio. Don't those radios go up to 100 watts? Yes, they do. Um, they do, but if I just use the radio without a linear, the maximum power I would have is 100. With the linear, obviously I'm looking at anywhere up to 200 watts uh, SSB. Um, if the, I mean, the difference between 100 and 200 watts is not very much. Mm. If it's 1S point, it might even be 2. But, I, you know, that's it. But it is the difference between getting through. And I mentioned about the pileups earlier. Um, when I was working the station uh, that was in Eritrea, um, in East Africa, there was a pile up, and I called him on a hundred watts straight from the radio, and he wouldn't pick, couldn't pick me up. And then I put the amplifier on up to about 150, 160 watts, and then he told everyone else to stand by while he could hear the pedestrian station. And some people couldn't or may ask me well, why don't you use stroke portable? Why do you use stroke pedestrian mobile? Much more well, unusual. It's more unusual and I've got wheels and I do walk with it. So I class <laughs> pedestrian mobile. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Russell. Uh, David, G0. Uh, you, 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 you chimed out then just a bit of a glitch on the whichever. Yeah. Far away, David. Great talk, Ken. Thank you very much. It's given me inspiration. I've been working for about two years on getting bicycle mobile, um, but my bicycle ride is not too good given that my balance isn't clever. 
So I'm actually looking at an electric trike with a trolley on the back, uh, or a, a trailer on the back. Um, any, ad, any advice as to how I might go? I've got an RM505, laugh, laugh. Um, I've got a small battery to run a port. I can easily get a car battery because when I was first licensed with a 100 watt radio, that's what I ran off, a car battery on a, on a float charge. So I have no fears about that or anything else uh, to do with power. Um, any, ad any advice on how to go about it? Well, um, right, very quickly. I did consider um, uh, uh, a little um, uh, disabled vehicle, you know, the, the, the little um, scooters that they ride around. Yeah. And I thought, if I got one of those and I put a little trailer on the back and I could get a few miles out of it, I can get on there I don't have to walk. I don't have to drag my trolley. I can go straight along. Exactly. A, a trolley in a trailer or just build the equipment in the trailer. Yes, I would say that is on the cards for me. I hope not for a long time because I want to, while ever I'm walking, I want to use my legs. But if, if, if it was a situation where you couldn't, you're not mobile enough or um, you wanted to work some DX and you could put, say, uh, one of these scooters in a car, there would be nothing stopping you mounting the equipment on the scooter itself or a very small trolley on the back. What you've got to remember is this trolley has got to be made of metal because it becomes an earth. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, you're capacitively coupling into earth. So we need something made of metal. And what I did on my trolley is to enhance it to make sure that I have got m maximum continuity between each part of the trolley, which is vertical, is I put wire between each part of the trolley to make sure I got total continuity. You got that. And also I bolted the earth wire to the trolley on the base plate. I bolted it on it and um, my initial test with a massive big crocodile clip it was it was good but it, but it wasn't as good as when I bolted the earth and I used earth strapping from UR67 yeah. on the trolley that was brilliant so all I'll say is if you can get a good earth onto your metal trailer and you can put a little sleeve in the corner of your trailer just it don't have to be 16 and a half foot that's just for 20 meters eight and a half or nine foot for 10 meters eight foot maybe um or 12 foot for uh, is it 15 meter band um that's all you need so you can do it it's just um what your preference is the reason i haven't done it in spain at the moment by the way is because there's a big purge on these people that are using scooters yeah the, take, the checking you out to make sure, firstly, that you are, in fact, unable to walk and disabled because there's so many of these idiots in Benidorm that have actually hired them and stolen them and run all the way around Benidorm with them like idiots on the <laughs> front. So the, the police have done a big purge on it. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question there. Those thanks. Um, um, the, the reason is that um, I'm partially sighted and I can't drive. And I, yeah. I have got a, a shopping trolley spare, or, or the frame spare, I've, I've actually worn out the bag, um, that I might press into service and carry that in the, on the back. And the, the, tr the trailer on the um, trike, the trike is for mobility because it's got a 40 mile range. Yeah. Uh, rather than, because I can't drive, I can actually uh, pedal a bit. And if, if the battery runs out, I can pedal. <laughs> So yeah. I'm not actually stuck in the middle of nowhere. Right. Where would you I, use it? Done, sorry? Where would you use it? Um, height is might. I would use it to go somewhere like up on the Pennines. Right. All I'm going to say to you, though, is that... I know, I know, will, I know what you said. Work, I, know what you said I know what you said about, and I, I've got some patches of fresh water. I'd like to do some testing with that. 
Black, yeah. Black Moorfoot Res seems like a good place since I used to live near there. Well, there have been some tests and some people have experimented with putting a trolley at the side of fresh water uh, as different to salt water. Mm. And the results that come back are that it does actually enhance the signal a little bit, but only yeah. a fraction, only a fraction. But, yeah, but you go but, by the sea, it's tremendous. Better than grit, dry grit stone on top of a mountain, though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, can I just yeah. come in on that one, yeah. please? It's going Gerald far, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, it's even better when you get right up on above the grit stone onto the peat hags because the peat has yeah. a the acid in it plus the acid in the water. <laughs> Back to you, Nick. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Right, anyone else um, got a question to Ken oh, before we go? Hello, Nick. Yeah. Can can you hear me? It's uh, Mike Zero D U K. Yeah, go on, yes, far away. Yeah, yeah. Hi there. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, Ken, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. I'm very sorry I seem to have lost the video on um, this little icon, so i um, restricted to audio. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, a very general question, a um, uh, little bit ignorant question, really, but, um, you know, obviously, um, uh, because of Ken's talk was on salt water, um, there's nothing as close to salt water than saline on it. What, what is the current um, position using the VHF mobile on a maritime vehicle? Would you have to have properly a marine license or could you use marine portable on, on salt water on a vehicle? Uh, back to you. Um, I, don't know if I, part, I may have only partially understood that, but um, are you asking me about marine band or, uh, or are you asking me about amateur band and amateur frequencies that going on the sea? Uh, that's correct Nick, yeah. Um, the position when you take your small VHF portable onto the deck off a boat and um, would be operating maritime mobile. Uh, in terms of um, the 157 frequency which is the ship to ship marine frequencies, does that uh, violate your license or can you basically use it to contact repeaters on the deck of a boat? Back to you. Well, firstly, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know the legislation regarding uh, marine uh, mobile. I mean, if you're licensed, I, I don't think there's any problem with using VHF, UHF repeaters. Um, I thought you may have asked me, is there any difference with the signal on VHF or UHF? Um, but you haven't asked me that. You're asking me more about whether it would be right to use it. Would you get away with it? I don't, my, my thoughts are that if you want to use your amateur license and you want to use the amateur frequencies, uh, go on, go on, uh, um, on, mo uh, on, um, on a boat. You, 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 you're, not, uh, you're not breaking any rules provided, and I think the only rule that you, you would break is if you came into the harbour. I don't think you're allowed to work within, uh, is it uh, one mile of a heart inside the harbour? And that, that's the only thing I know about that. Um, Can I come in on that, Ken? Yes. Go on, far away, Darren. Yeah, um, to operate maritime mobile, yes, you can use an amateur radio licence. First of all, if it's a commercial uh, boat, you have to have um, permission of it. I think the license is the master of the ship or the captain as uh, we would know them. So you've got to get permission there. Uh, you couldn't just go on a ferry and start operating. You will be um, breaking your license. And there is, uh, you've got to be in international waters. So if you're just off a coastline, you're not in international waters. Um, and I will stand correct. I think that's, I can't remember whether it's two or five kilometers. Um, to operate because I, I've, I've operated several times maritime mobile um, so I have looked up the rules. Yeah thank, thank you very much guys. Uh, just, just to add to that um, obviously the maritime frequencies are spread over 60 um, uh, pre VHF frequencies uh, obviously they all have different designated use one of which is the, F, the AFS distress signal so you know if one is using a maritime frequency one has to do it with caution but uh, I, I know I digress a little bit from Ken's talk but um, obviously Ken if you want to take it from a saltwater point of view uh, is there a difference um, using the UH and VHF on saltwater? Good question 
I've got to hold my hand up and say I've never tried it. Um, I have considered trying six meters, which is VHF, isn't it? Six meters does come under the VHF bands. Um, I don't know. The, the honest answer here is I don't know if it would enhance it at all because what you're looking for is an angle of radiation that's quite sharp, which is suitable and uh, best for HF bands. And bearing in mind, you're looking for something, what, what's called a multi-hop of propagation. So it's all geared up to HF. I, I, I don't think for one minute it would really enhance the HF, mm. uh, the VHF or UHF. I've never tried it. I know I've got that on my FT857, but I've never done it. Uh, I even had my doubts whether six meters and putting up a little aerial that was one and a half meters high, a quarter wave for six meters, would work. And I don't think it will very well. And I think that's why they resort to having horizontal beams. Don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much, Ken. Yeah. Back to you, Nick. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Ken, for that. And uh, thanks for the question. Uh, uh, just, 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 just to clarify, just to add to Darren's contribution there, uh, the amateur radio license, of course, only allows us to transmit on the frequencies for which our licenses apply. So we are not allowed to transmit on the VHF FM uh, maritime frequencies. You need a specific license that in the UK is issued by Ofcom for operating on those frequencies. Um, right, anyone else got a question? Anyone else got a hand up that hasn't asked a question yet, David? I'll come back to you if no one else is there. Otherwise, uh, right, yeah, Richard, GCX. Um, Ken. Yes. Have you ever been up uh, the witches uh, in Cheshire where the salt fields are, the salt mines? No, I haven't. No, no. Because I wonder what it'd be like there, you know, you're on about the sea being salty, et cetera, et cetera. If you went up there and put, your, put an earth in the ground, I wonder how that would improve uh, your signal. So much to do for you. Well, oh, I don't know if I'll, I've not got time. I'm going to Echo Alpha 5. What <laughs> um, is it? You know, yeah. Nantwich, Middlewich, uh, some other witches and... Yeah, I know Nantwich, yeah, I know that yeah, area. Yeah, that area. Yeah. Um, I don't, uh, well, what I would say, and as quick as I can answer this question, what you would probably have got is um, a good... DC ground for your equipment. In other mm -hmm. words, it would probably reduce any static, any band noise, whether it would enhance your signal, because you're not looking at a big ground plane, are you? You're looking at uh, what you call the, well, they're not lakes, aren't they little ponds or something? Or, a, or a, um, what do I don't you know. I've only seen it on TV, you see. Yeah. I would imagine that if you stuck a um, copper rod into the sea, it will reduce the noise, like band noise, and it will enhance the signal a little bit on receive. But I don't think you would get the benefit of transmit because you need a massive ground plane around you. And that's where the sea comes into it. Uh, no one's asked me about the size of the salt lagoons, there are roads that run through the salt lagoons and the roads are about 20 foot wide. But other than that, <laughs> the whole area is surrounded by salt water that's only two foot deep. And it's so, um, it's, it's got such a high density of salt. You may as well be just stood in the middle of the sea. Uh, so the ground plane effect from that is tremendous. Whereas sticking a rod in the ground might be a good DC earth for your transceiver and would just reduce the noise. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, you might as well go to Dead Sea. Well, that's <laughs> perfect, that. That's a good, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. The, the density of salt there is, uh, well, fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, in fact, you could just walk straight in and you yeah. wouldn't think, would you? Well, 
Makes you wonder. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you never know. Um, I was going to mention to anyone that if anyone wants to join the WhatsApp group, you, you're quite, uh, you know, welcome to do so. And they just have to contact me for my mobile number and I'll put you into the group. Um, and um, you can see what happens. And um, also what I'm going to do is uh, from the middle of next week, I will be in Echo Alpha 5. And what I'll do is somehow I'll make contact with someone or, uh, or I'll send an email to the club so that you know when I'm going out uh, or I'll just um, uh, maybe even message uh, email Nick or something and uh, you know whatever and Nick can pass the information around so if you want to contact me you can see it for yourself and work me while I'm down there. Yeah good idea Ken I think that would be appreciated by lots of people who'd like to work you while you're out there. Uh, Roger uh, for G4 you have said. Hi um, thanks Ken yeah really interesting um, you said you were capacitively coupling the, the sat car to the thing. Why would you not just plant it on the beach and they'll let it couple directly? Or is that what, what? Why would they do that? Right. Uh, it has been done, but they don't seem to. What happens is they don't seem to get as good um, a reflection. The the current meter doesn't go up. It's as if the GTU with its capacitor and its little tune coil inside needs something to work against. And I noticed that what I did is I put some bricks underneath the trolley to start with, and I couldn't get as good um, an R, uh, um, current deflection on the meter. When I put the sheet, which is only as, as thin as a sheet of A4, that literally is the thickness of it, it's sturdy, it's quite thick. When I say thick, it's sturdy plastic. Um, it's not like a plastic shopping bag, it's thicker than that. Um, when I put that under the trolley, the current meter went straight up as high as it would go on deflection. And I think I can only say to you, it's because, because you're giving it uh, it's, it's working like a capacitor. That's why they say it's capacitively coupled and it's giving something to push against. Uh, that's the only thing I can suggest. I don't know if anyone else would have any input on that. That's fascinating. And you, that's you just imagine point. you want a proper earth connection, but the sat cart's doing its job. And then, yeah. then like you say, you don't want a, 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 the physical connection. You just want the capacitive link. That's fascinating. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. All right then, uh, Roger. Thanks, Roger. Right. Um, I can't see anyone else waving at me. Um, I would, if that's it, I'm going to, I'm going to um, thank Ken very much indeed for his um, presentation tonight. I think everyone enjoyed it. And first of all, can we show our appreciation to Ken in the normal way as we do on here? So, um, yeah. all the different ways. <laughs> Bit of, a, bit of a difficult start, but when I got there, it, I think it was okay. It was absolutely fine, Ken. Right. Um, I would like to, uh, so just in finishing this bit of the meeting before we uh, let uh, people chat between themselves in the last uh, bit of the meeting, can I just run through uh, the next uh, speakers we've got at the club? Uh, obviously, I'll be posting it on Facebook and elsewhere. Uh, next week, we have got Howard uh, WB2UZE, who is the one of the founders of the Long Island CW Club. Um, and they've come in to follow up the uh, presentation that uh, Dan Robinchak, uh, Robinchik, uh, KB6NU gave last week on having fun with Morse code. And they're going to do a presentation on what the Long Island CW Club are doing. Uh, their uh, club lessons that they're giving in CW, uh, which they're running in Europe as well as in North America, and uh, giving, I think, some ideas for people about how to improve their Morse code and to learn Morse code. So that's next week. Uh, the week after, on the 15th of July, we've got Michael uh, G0POT, who's going to give a talk on his... Uh, uh, fun he's had with uh, summits on the air. Uh, 
I, I myself have given a talk on this at the club some time ago in the Pie Hall, uh, but uh, I know Michael is a very dedicated uh, SOTA operator and uh, he's given this talk a few times uh, to clubs around the country and he's kindly agreed to do an online talk for us on the 15th. And the following week on the 22nd, and uh, by all means take a note of this and go and have a look for yourselves, uh, we've got a guy called Alan Walk, uh, W2AEW. He's an engineer for the company Tektronics. Uh, so uh, his, he really is uh, a guy who uh, is a specialist electrical electronics engineer. Uh, and uh, he's going to, he's produced literally hundreds of brilliant videos on using uh, VNAs, using oscilloscopes, using spectrum analyzers, taking measurements. Uh, some is quite complex, some is very simple. And he's going to give us a talk and give us a run through of his YouTube videos and uh, just show people a few glimpses of some of the work he's done. So for people who are regulars here, who are interested in building and uh, interested in electronics, uh, then uh, I think uh, you'll enjoy Alan's uh, speech. He's an excellent presenter. He's got a great YouTube uh, channel uh, called W2AEW, Alan Walk. So that's the next three weeks. So on that note, I'm going to uh, thank everyone indeed for their contributions. And I can thank Ken again for his excellent contribution. We all enjoyed it and uh, loved hearing the uh, contacts with VKZL Ken. That was great. So on that note, I'm going